go. Okay. Orla. Um, if leaven of coolants fell into dough and leavened it, then leaven of trumo or leaven of kalil hachayim. We're, no, we're in um, base yud. Yud. I put the check on one side. I go the other side. Condiments of two or three categories of one kind or, th or three are forbidden and combined. Reb Shimon says two or three categories of one kind or two kinds of one category do not combine. If leaven of kulin and truma fell into dough and neither this suffice to leaven nor that suffice to leaven, but together they leavened, uh, Reb Eliezer says, I go after the last. But the Kakamans say whether the forbidden fell in first or last, it never renders forbidden unless it suffices to leaven. And uh, Yotze Abirira was one of the disciples of Beit Shammai, and he said, I asked Ram Gamaliel, the elder, when he was standing in the eastern gate, and he said, it never renders forbidden unless it suffices to leaven. Okay. Right. Kalim Shesachan B'Shemin Tamei B'Chaz B'Shemin B'Shemin Tahor. So, um, so let's say you have uh, leather, leather clothes, like shoes. Okay. Okay, which... Um, in order to treat the leather, uh, the treatment is to rub oil into into the leather. Okay. Now this oil was tame. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, um, so he first he he first uh, put them in uh, with uh, he first rubbed them with with tame oil. Um, okay. In order to in order to soften the leather, and then he he uh, and then he an, uh, anointed them afterwards with shemen tahor. After the first round had dried already, and he took the and he already took the, the shoes to the mikveh, right? Right. So now he's so he toiled the shoes. Now the thing is with a mikveh, mikveh a mikveh can be matahir clothing, but it can't be matahir oil. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now so so then so then so our order of play is first he rubs the tamay oil into the into the shoes. Okay, and just to be sure, it's dried, and uh, and now we, we we dip the shoes in the mikveh. They come out, they're fine, and then he gives them another treatment. This time with tahor oil, or shisafim neshim and tahor because of shisafim neshim and tame, or vice versa. He started with the tahor oil, then he and then he did the the tame oil last. Rabbi Eliezer Amir Achar Harishon Aniba Chachamimrim Achar Achron. Interesting. So, so since we were talking about this machlokes um, between uh, Rabbi Eliezer and Chachamim about the order of things, like two, two Mishnahs ago, we said about um, the uh, about, about two two half measures of uh, of of, of Seor fell in, and then Rabbi Eliezer said, "I go I, I go after the last one." That's Makkah Papatish. So Rabbi Eliezer says, "I go after the first one now." Okay. What's his uh, um, he says at the time that, that excuse me, the sneeze. Uh, no, maybe not. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, so he says, so uh, the, while the shoes are in use, they're going to ooze out oil from, from the, that's absorbed in, in the leather. While they're in use, while someone's just walking with them? Yeah, or? somebody's walking with them. They're going to ooze out a bit of the oil. Okay. Okay. So Rabbi Eliezer says they ooze out the first oil. If he so if he, if he anointed them first with with, with tame oil, then the, whatever comes out is tame. But the chachamim say uh, first in, last out, mm -hmm. which just in terms of physics seems the more reasonable position. Right. And this and this Rabbi Eliezer is worried that the, that you anointed it from the outside and it's going to uh, come out from the inside. Um, but uh, but pa Pashtas, it's not that's not what he's saying. So it's uh, so just in terms of physics, it's difficult to understand how how Rabbi Leza holds that the that the first in is going to be first out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I can't even imagine dumping my shoes in a mixer. So that's a... well, that's because we're not makpid on Tum and Tara. Right. But if you had to go to the base of Mikdash and you wanted to, make, okay, on, uh, granted, you can't even go into the Mikdash with shoes on. But any other kalim, your clothes. If your clothes are tame and you want to go into the base of mikdash, you've got to make sure that you put your clothes in the mikvah. Right, right. And if they're tame mace, such yeah. as you've been, in, such as you went to a funeral in those clothes and stood in the oil with the mace, then you're going to have to do pyraduma on your clothes right. as well. Right. right. Mm. Okay. Um, so or shel truma v'shel kilaya hakerem shenaflu l'tzok isa. 
So you've got two, two uh, types of, of ISR. One is Truma, which is only ISR to, uh, to non Kwanim. And you've got Kilaya Kerim, which is ISR to everyone. Okay, and both of these sourdoughs fell into a, into, um, into a dough. So be between them, there was enough to make the dough rise, but one of them by themselves would not have been sufficient. Okay. So since, um, according to, according to Zarim, um, both of these are Asr. So, so Tachlis, as far as you, as far as you're concerned, if you're a non kohen you look at this and the two things of Esther that have, that, that have made this dough rise, this dough is Esther to me. But if I'm a kohen I'll say, oh, well, the Truma is Muta to me. So the, and the Kilaya Kairim is Batal. So therefore, says the Tanakama, I can, um, as a kohen I'm allowed to eat this. Did you follow this? The, 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 truma, the truma is... Because the Truma is Muta to him. So, so, so and the Kilaya Kairim, is, is, and the is, kilaya kerem is asked to him, but right. because the because the shear is so small that it it it, 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 it wasn't enough. The kilaya kerem is so small. That right. It just just rem remember that that argument that we just had with Rabbi Eliezer. The Chachamim said, if they if they join together, um, if they join together, then um, the, then the Chachamim who disagree with Rabbi Eliezer, Rabbi Eliezer says achra achra on anibar. And the Chachamim say, "Ben Shenafel Isul Betchila Ben Dosof Leolam Eno Oser Ad Sheyev Bo Kedai Lechametz." So the Chachamim, the position that we follow is that unless the Isser itself has enough to ferment it, it's it's battle. Okay. So here, as uh, as far as the coin is concerned, the only Isser is the is the Kilaya Kerem, and there wasn't enough there to be Machmets. Okay. You okay. The word, you used the word that I didn't know before. You said according to something with the. Um, uh, like a, a Z, you know. Um, so, so I don't, I don't remember the word. Oh gosh, I'll have to, re I'll have to rewind the recording to and uh, what, uh, what I said. Um, Sakaram or something like that, or I didn't know that word. Um, when, 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 when did I say it? What was I talking about? At the, at the, at the, at the, at the, at the, the that was like the first one or two sentences that you said, according to. Sakharim or something I don't know. Oh, oh, Chachamim, according to Chachamim. Oh, you didn't say Chachamim though. It didn't sound. Like yeah, that. according according to the Chachamim versus Rabbi Eliezer. But I saw. I, I did say according to Chachamim versus Rabbi Eliezer um, that we we say we that 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 you need Isser. Um, the Isser has to be uh, has to be sufficient to be uh, to, to be machmitz in order to in order to co cause the the whole dough to become Asser. So I didn't hear Chacham, and I heard some uh, some other thing get in. There. Okay. All right. That's I didn't know. What that okay. Was. Cool. Um, so then a similar case in in Mishnah Tesvav, Tavlin shall truma b'shel kilaya kerem. So instead of talking about spy uh, about um, uh, um, leaven sourdough, we, we're now talking about um, uh, spices. So spices are pungent, and they and and they have and it and the taste is strong. Um, so you've got the make, both both truma and kilai. Oh, oh, sorry, I forgot to to have the last sentence of the previous mission, which is very important. Rabbi Shimon matir lazarim villa because remember Rabbi Shimon's shita is that um, is that the um, if you have two different categories of iser, they don't join together. Yeah. But you don't hold the halacha. But he says that if you've got the sense, you have two different iser, and you've got one is truma and one is kilai akerem. They don't join together to make uh, to make Isra, and each one is mavatal the other. We had that before, also, mm -hmm. okay. and we're going to have it in this Mishnah too. Okay, okay when we're talking about spices, we, this time it's uh, it's spices of truma and of kilaya kerem, and they fell into a pot. Okay, loba elu kedelatabel, the loba elu kedelatabel. Each one by itself would not have imparted flavor, but because you have both of them together, now you can taste the spices. When it's tarfum tivlu, asu lazarim umutela koanim. So once again, it is prohibited for a non-Kohen to eat this, but, uh, but for a Kohen, it's fine because the truma is, is a mucho taste for him and the, only the kilaya kerem is asr and that's, and that's not sufficient to, uh, to spice the pot. Rabbi Shimon matir lezarim vila koanim. And once again, Rabbi Shimon says, you don't join the isurim together. So whether it's about uh, tam or whether it's about chimutz, uh, Rabbi Shimon is consistent in his view that uh, that the two different categories of Isser do not join together to make the shear. 
um, but the Chachamim say they do, and the Halacha follows the Chachamim. Right, um, Chala Dalit Tess. I noticed you were advertising for participants yesterday. Oh, I, I wasn't really. Um, I updated the I updated the um, the calendar invite because uh, because the invite was always making a noise when I was recording the Rav's Drasha in the morning. Oh, really? <laughs> so I, so I just so I went into my into my calendar and I just removed the reminder. Uh, I didn't realize it was going to send an update to everybody. <laughs> there were two of them that came out. It was funny. So, it, you know, when there's one and then another one. After, you know. Yeah. The second one, you said you left the details of the participants out. That was the second one, I think. Basically the same. But you, know, like you weren't putting everyone's name in there. Um, okay. Whatever. I, all I was doing was removing the alerts. I didn't realize it was going to send an update to everyone. Okay. Uh, and the following may be given to any priest. Devoted things, the firstborn, the redemption price of a son, the ransom of the firstborn of a donkey, the shoulder, the two cheeks, and the maw, the first of the fleece, oil which must be burnt, holy things of the temple, and first fruits. The Yehuda forbids the first fruits. The vetches of Truma, uh, um, Rokiva permits, but the Kakaman forbid. Um, oops, sorry. Okay. Uh, Nittai of Tikoa brought chalot from Betar, but they did not accept them from him. The men of Alexandria brought their chalot from Alexandria, but they did not accept that, them from them. The men of Hart Sivion brought their Bikurim before Shavuos, but they did not accept them from them because of what is written in the Torah and the feast of harvest, the first fruits of your labors which you sow in the field. Last over here is. Um, ben um, Antinios brought up his first things from Babylon, but they did not accept them from him. Joseph the priest brought Bikurim of wine and oil, but they did not accept that from him. He also took up his sons and members of his household to make the, the, the uh, Pesach Sheni in Yerushalayim, but they did not turn. But they turned him back, lest he establish himself as obligatory. Ariston brought his Bikurim from Apamamia. Um, uh, me, right, and they accepted them from him because they said, "One who buys in Syria is as if one buys in the Yishu- suburb of Yerushalayim." Where are we going after uh, Orla? We're going back to Orla again. Okay, yeah. it's very confusing. Okay, Masish Shani, Aleph Gimel. No, I think for the past four days, every every day we've we've done a, a seum of a mas, of a maseches. <laughs> if one buys cattle for peace offerings or a or a non-domestic animal for meat consumption, the hide becomes not holy, even though the hide exceeds the flesh. Sealed jars of wine in localities where they are sold sealed, the jar becomes not holy. Nuts and almonds they sell their, their shells become not holy. Grape residue wine before it is fermented, it may not be brought with mice and money. After it has fermented, it may be bought with mice and money. Uh, if one buys a non-domestic animal for a peace offering or cattle for meat consumption, the hide does not become non-holy. Open or sealed jars of wine, when they are sold open, the jars do not become uh, non-holy. Baskets of olives and baskets of grapes together with the receptacle, the value of the receptacle does not become non-holy. And if one buys water or salt or produce attached to the soil or produce which cannot reach Yerushalayim, he has not brought miser. If one bought produce in error, the money must be returned. If wittingly, he must go up and be eaten and, and, and be eaten uh, in the place. But when there is no temple, let it rot. Okay. Haydalad. A vine planted in a wine press or in a cleft is granted its tillage space, and one may sow the rest. The Yossi says that if there are not four cubits, one may not bring the seeds there. One may, not, one may sow in a house located in a vineyard. If one plants vegetables or retains them in a vineyard, he renders, them, renders for, forbidden 45 vines. When? If they are planted four or five apart, if they were planted six or seven apart, he read this forbidden 16 amas in every direction in a circle, not in a square. If one sees vegetables in a vineyard and declares, I will pluck it when I get it, get to it, it's permitted. 
I will pluck it when I return. If it increased by a two, one two by a two hundredth, it's forbidden. Okay, so that's uh, so. If if he had the opportunity to remove it and he didn't, now the clock starts ticking, and if it grows enough, then right. he's going to usher his his karim. You should you should have done it right then. Not that's right. That's right. <laughs> okay. Okay, we are. Ara uh, base dalad. If a bird rested upon her, the cow is valid. If a bull mounted her, the cow is invalid. Rabbi Yehuda says, if he mounted the male upon her, it is invalid. But if the male mounted her on his own, it is valid. If it had two black or white hairs inside one paw, it's invalidated. Rabbi Yehuda says, even inside one coast, if they were inside two coasts, then they were aligned one with the other. It is invalid, invalidated. Rabbi Kiva says, even four, five, and even they are scattered, you should pull them out. Rabbi Elias says, even 50. Rabbi Shua ben Zusera says, even if there is one non-red hair on her head and one hair on her tail, she is invalidated. If it had two hairs whose roots were black and tips were red, or whose roots were red and the tips were black, or it all depends on what is visible. These are the words of Rav Meir, but the, the, the comments say it depends on the root. Now they say here in the beginning of this, um, uh, the second, oh yeah, in the, in the second line, the Behuda says even inside one coast, a coast that's in one follicle, right? A coast is a cup, though we say coast is spelled. Yeah, it's, it's, that's right. It's, so the follicle is like a cup, right? Uh, the shape, right? Okay. Seven days before the burning of a para, they would sequester the Kohen who was to burn the para from his house or the chamber of the front of the uh, mirror in uh, the northeast corner of the temple and it was called the stone house and they would sprinkle mekatos on him all seven days from all katos ashes that were there Reb Yossi says they would sprinkle mekatos on him only on the third and seventh days and Reb Kanina uh, Sigan Hakohanam says they would sprinkle mekatos on the Kohen who burned the power on all seven days but they would sprinkle mekatos on the Kohen who performed the service of Yom Kippur only on the third and seventh days so we see there's a, like also before before Yom Kippur they would sequester the coin Gadol for a week right. just to make sure that he's ta that he would be tahor um, and um, and we have and we see over here there's an extra stringency by the Paraduma because it's uh, such a rare occasion and you really 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 don't want to mess up. <laughs> If one slaughters a, a sacrifice to throw its blood outside or part of the blood outside, to burn its sacrifice parts outside or part of its sacrificial parts outside, to eat its meat outside or to eat an olive's volume of its meat outside or to eat an olive's volume of the hide of the tail outside, of the tail outside it's invalid. But it bears no caras. To throw its blood tomorrow or part of its blood tomorrow, to burn its sacrificial parts tomorrow or part of its sacrificial parts tomorrow, to eat its meat tomorrow, or to eat an olive's volume of the meat tomorrow, or to eat an olive's volume of the skin of a sheep's tail, it is piggle, and one is liable for carus over it. So that's an important distinction just to remember that uh, that when it when it's uh, about location, then there's no piggle. When it's about time, mm -hmm. then it's about then then there's piggle. piggle. This is the rule. Anyone who slaughters, receives, conveys, or throws the blood with the intent to eat something which is meant to be eaten or burned upon the altar, something which is meant to be burnt, if it outside its place, it's invalid, and it bears, but it bears no karas. If beyond its time, it's piggle, and one is liable to karas over, its part, over, over it, provided that the part which makes it permissible is offered as required. To what manner is the part which makes it permissible considered to have been offered as required? If he slaughtered in silence, but received the blood, conveyed and threw it for beyond its time, he slaughtered, or he slaughtered it for beyond its time, but received the blood, conveyed and threw it in silence, or he slaughtered, received the blood, covered and th um, conveyed and threw it in for beyond its time. This is the case in which the part which makes it permissible has been offered as required. It, but this makes all this all piggle, though, right? It's all, yeah. In what manner is the part which makes it permissible not considered to have been offered as required if he slaughtered with intent for outside its area, but received the blood conveyed and threw it for beyond its time, or he slaughtered with intent for beyond its time, but received the blood conveyed and threw it for outside its area, or he slaughtered, received the blood conveyed or threw it for outside its area, or a Pesach or Katas offering which is slaughtered for a designation other than its own, and received the blood conveyed and threw it for beyond its time, 
or is slaughtered with intent for beyond its time, but received the blood conveyed and threw it for a designation other than its own, or is slaughtered, received the blood conveyed or threw it for a designation other than its own, this is a case in which the part which makes it permissible was not offered as required. Right, so that's a, so that's an important thing. Is that for pickle, you've got to have uh, the, the concept of karab and matir so that the that the uh, permit uh, permitter, you know, the the thing that that makes it permitted to, for the mizbeach or for eating um, is done properly, but it's done but it's done with the uh, machshava of chutz So the, if it's not if you the, if you messed up the matir, then it, then there's no pickle either. So it's a it's a very narrow sort of definition that everything else about the korban was right, um, but uh, but the intention to eat it outside the zman or do something outside the zman uh, turns it into pegel. Okay. Kisubos, hey hey. These are the kinds of work which a woman must do for her husband. She must grind, bake, wash, cook, and nurse her child, make his bed, and work with wool. If she brought him one maidservant, she need neither grind, bake, nor wash. If she brought him two, she needs neither cook nor nurse her child. Three, she needs neither to make his bed nor work with wool. Four, she may sit in an easy chair. Rabbi Eliezer says, even if she brought him a hundred maidservants, he should compel her to work with wool, for idleness brings unchastity. Rabbi Shimon ben Gamil says, even if one pronounces a vow upon his wife not to do any work, he must divorce her and give her kasuba for idleness brings to insanity. If one pronounces a vow on his wife nor to have, uh, not to have relations, but Shammai says, two weeks. Beis Hillel says, one week. Students may leave for Torah study without permission. For 30 days, laborers, uh, 30 days, laborers, one week. If a woman rebels against her husband, they decrease the ketuba seven. Oh, hold on, hold on. You you let you you skipped a bit there. That's a good point. Um, the con, uh, conjugal rights stated in the Torah are as follows: men of leisure every day, laborers twice a week, donkey drivers once a week, camel drivers once in thirty days, sailors once in six months, and these are the words of Eliezer. If a woman rebels against her husband, they decrease the ketuba seven dinners a week. The Behuda says. Uh, who says seven seven topakics, trop, right? No, that's wrong. A tarpa ikin, a tarpa ikin, uh, where a tarpa ik is, uh, is a half of a dinar. Okay. Until when does he decrease? Until he decreases a sum corresponding to a katsuba. Rabbi Yossi says he may go on decreasing it continually. Perhaps an inheritance will fall to her from somewhere else and he will recollect therefrom. Likewise, if one rebels against his wife, they increase the ketubah for three dinners a week, and Rabbi Yehuda says three chopaks. If one supports... That's it. We're done. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Well, we're going to start all at Aleph Aleph tomorrow? Or at Aleph Aleph tomorrow, yeah. Just want to make sure. All right. Have a all right. Day. Joy. Thank you. Have a lovely day. See you tomorrow, Mr. Shem. Thank you. Bye.